What's up guys, my name is Calvin Wiley and welcome to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing Latrodectus by Shopee, commonly referred to as the Red Widow. This is a species of spider I've been wanting for a very long time now, and so I am extremely excited to be able to share with you guys on camera that very spider. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. All right, so this right here is Latrodectus by Shopee, commonly referred to as the Red Widow. Now, I apologize in advance. She is very active and is kind of hard to control to keep in front of the camera, but I'm gonna do my best. But this species of spider is one that I've been wanting for a very long time now. There was actually quite a few times where I could have gotten one, but I kind of put it off to the side and chose to get other things instead. But I finally made the decision to finally get one. What's interesting about the Red Widow is that it's only native to Florida, believe it or not. So it is a Florida exclusive. So the Red Widow can be found within the spider family known as Theridiidae. The spider family Theridiidae contains over 3,000 different species of spiders within that one family. It also comprises of 124 different genera as well. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what genera is, genera is simply the plural word for genus, genus being singular, genera being more than one genus. And so, Within the 124 different genera within the Theridiidae family contains one infamous genus, and that genus is none other than Latrodectus. Now, the genus Latrodectus contains 34 different species of spiders within that one genus. Now, spiders within the Latrodectus genus are commonly referred to as true widows. Now, the Red Widow, Latrodectus by Shopee, is one out of those 20, uh, 34 different species of spiders within the Latrodectus genus. So, the Red Widow is a species of true widow. Now, you may be thinking, is the Red Widow a type of Black Widow? Maybe you were thinking that, maybe you weren't, I don't know. But my answer to that would be, sort of, and I'll explain why. So common names kind of can be very tricky um, because a lot of them are very broad in the sense they don't really contain much else other than a, you know, a basic simplification of what they are. Uh, scientific classification taxonomy provides a much better answer into figuring out and answering what organisms are. And so the Latrodectus genus contains spiders commonly referred to as black widows. Now, from my personal experience, uh, many people, and this is just, like I said, from my personal experience, many people assume and believe that there's just one black widow, just one species of black widow, and that is not true. So the word black widow just refers to really any species of true widow within the Latrodectus genus that just happens to be the color black. And so there's actually several different species of true widows that are the color black that are referred to as black widows. Just to name a few, you have Latrodectus variolus, which is the northern black widow. There's Latrodectus mactens, which is the southern black widow. Uh, Latrodectus hesperus, which is the western black widow. Uh, and then you also have the infamous species from Australia and New Zealand, Latrodectus heselti, which is the redback spider, also commonly referred to as the Australian black widow. And so there's not just one, you know, type or species of black widow. You have several species of true widows that are the color black that are given the, the name Black Widow, but this is just because they are widow spiders, true widows, that are the color black, you know, hence Black Widow. Um, and then you also have a few other species of true widows that obviously aren't black, such as the one I'm holding now, Latrodexis by Shopee, the Red Widow. Um, oops. <laughs> you also have Latrodectus pallidus, which is the White Widow. Uh, and then there's also uh, Latrodectus geometricus, which is the Brown Widow. 
and so so on and so forth there's 34 different species of true widows within the latrodectus genus within the family theridae and so is the red widow a type of black widow it's a type of true widow, a species of true widow, that'd be the correct terminology. And so this is why I always like to refer to as black widows the best I can, as true widows. If I, you know, obviously if I'm gonna call it its common name, yeah, I'll say, you know, Southern Black Widow, Western Black Widow, whatever, you know, Northern Black Widow, but I always try to reference the term true widow so that people realize that you know, this is a broader sense of the name, uh, you know, Black Widow is just, you know, it's common name. True Widow is really what it scientifically is. So really quickly, I just wanted to share with you guys my brand new line of stickers that I have available for sale on my website. All of these are various animals that I drew on paper by hand, colored them in, and then converted them into high quality, long lasting, waterproof stickers. Just to give you a quick idea of what they look like up close, here's one of my favorite drawings that I drew of a European Hornet. All of these drawings were achieved by using these markers to color them in. If you're interested in purchasing any of these stickers, you can head on over to my website, calvinwiley.net, or you can hit the link in my description which will send you directly to my website for you to purchase them. Thank you so much to all of those in advance who end up getting one for supporting my small business. And now, back to the video. Something that usually gets brought up when true widows are mentioned is their venom. So the genus Latrodectus is a medically significant genus of spiders in the sense that the spider species within that particular genus contain pretty potent venom. And so this is why this is such an infamous group of spiders. Um, and that is because of their venom that is able to cause intense pain in people and also in animals as well. Now the Red Widow, as well as all other members of the Latrodectus genus, contain neurotoxic venom. Now this is venom that attacks the nervous system and can cause pretty intense pain on the nerve endings. Um, there's many symptoms that can be induced by a bite from one of these spiders. Some symptoms include headaches, fever, nausea, vomiting, uh, muscle cramps and spasms, uh, abdominal pain, super, really sharp abdominal pain uh, and cramping. Now, rarely is a bite ever fatal, although, you know, it has happened before. It's just very, very uncommon. Uh, a lot of people like to assume that people just, you know, get bit by these spiders and drop dead. Uh, that is simply not the case. Uh, but people who do have a compromised immune system, uh, infants and also the elderly tend to develop more severe symptoms. But a healthy adult human usually is completely fine after a few days or even a week. Although there is the unfortunate cases of a bite leaving years of lasting symptoms. Uh, but typically the norm is a few days to a week or two, and then people usually, uh, their symptoms have subsided. So as you can see, this red widow has been crawling on me throughout most of this video, and she has not bitten me once or shown any signs of doing so. And the reason for that is because spiders do not want to just bite people for no reason. I know the media likes to portray that, you know, movies and things of that nature, but the honest truth is that these spiders as well as really all spiders just want to be left alone they don't want to waste their venom on something they can't eat such as a human like myself and so conserving venom for their prey is their ideal um, nature they want to use their venom to kill and subdue their prey and they can't do that if they waste it all on a human now, obviously they can regain uh, their venom back. They can, you know, uh, fuel themselves back up, but that takes time and also a lot of energy to do so. And so they're not gonna wanna do that to a human. Now they will, if they have to defend themselves by any means, you know, they wanna be kept alive. 
Now, obviously, I'm not condoning or advocating anyone to hold any species of true widow. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just showing and saying that spiders can, for the most part, be handled safely if they are respected and do not feel threatened. And as you can see, this true widow feels safe and calm. Now, she doesn't even really have a sense that she is on a human. It's not like they can conceptualize that or even come to the understanding of what I am. She doesn't even realize that she is walking on a human right now. Uh, you know, spiders don't really have a sense of that. They can't really conceptualize that idea or under, you know, come to that understanding. To her, she's just walking on the ground and the ground from underneath of her is moving and shifting as she goes along. She's just reacting to her environment, reacting to stimuli. Uh, you know, if I put my finger out, she's going to then advance to my finger and then so on and so forth if I do it again. And so to her, she's just on the ground. So. You know, it's not until you mess with them, that's when they will bite. Obviously, I'm not going to do that, but yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that is going to conclude today's video. If you guys have any questions about the Red Widow or just True Widows in general, just let me know in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. If you guys enjoyed the video, if you could please leave a like and a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell icon to turn on post notifications. That way you're alerted every time that I post a new video. Follow me on Instagram at Kelvin Wiley and also on TikTok at Kelvin underscore Wiley. Check out my website, KelvinWiley.net, and I will see you guys in the next video.